everyone. Welcome to PHTV Channel 4 in Palos Heights. I'm Sue Jankowski and we are at the library. So as we always do, we will talk about all the things that are up and coming. We've got uh, Janine, who is uh, head of public services, and we've got Tina, who's head of youth and teen services with us today, as always. And today we're going to start with Tina. And this is a this is a big time of year for the youth and teen department, I know for sure, because, you know, we're getting really started on that summer reading. I think I'm right. Right, Tina? Yes, yes, definitely. Um, first, you just wanted to backtrack a little bit and make an announcement that the library is going to be closed on Monday, July 4th in celebration of Independence Day. But be sure to see the library and lots of other businesses in Palos Heights, as we will be walking, marching in the parade at 12 p.m. that day as well. And that is always fun. It's a great parade and it's really grown so much. And it's always fun to be waving at the, all the people that work at the library that you know. So head out there. Yes, we're looking forward to it. <laughs> Um, as you mentioned earlier, summer reading is underway. Uh, our summer reading theme is Read Beyond the Beaten Path. And our summer reading program runs from June 1st all the way to July 30th. So be sure to come in and register. Um, yesterday, we did have our 100th uh, child come in and register for the summer reading program. And that was she was very excited that she was our 100th person. So we gave her some goodies and she got to take a picture with our campsite. So, oh, oh, fun to be the 100th. Yes, yes. So definitely come in. We have all sorts of prizes and we have some very generous sponsors this year too. So definitely come in and take advantage of that. That's great. Mm -hmm. And wanted to remind everyone that every Monday throughout summer, we have Crafty Mondays. And the neat thing about Crafty Mondays is there's a different craft every week. So if you have some restless kids or teenagers at home that are, are kind of just like bored with doing the same thing, come and visit us every week because we do have a different craft that they can take and make at home. And we have a special video to go ahead and show them how to complete it as well. Okay, so you come in, get the craft, go home, look at the video, make the craft. Yes. That's that's great because we all need things to do in the summer. Yeah. And then every Tuesday we have fun with s'mores. Now, I got to tell you, this week's s'more is the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup s'more. And it is only Wednesday. And from Monday to Wednesday, we've given away over 50 s'more kits. So... Uh -huh. <laughs> Definitely come in and take advantage of all the different s'mores. We have all different kinds of s'mores and flavors as well. And you don't even need to go to the store and get anything. You can just come to the library, pick up your s'more kit and take it at home. Oh, cool. Everybody loves s'mores. Mm -hmm. And also every Friday we have Book Talk Fridays. So that is when us librarians in the youth and teen department get to share some of our favorite book reads with you and things that we think you might enjoy to read over the summer, or we might be talking about just our new books that we have in house, or maybe books that are going to be made into movies. So we talk about two books every week. So one is usually a chapter book, and then the other one is a young adult book. So if you're looking for something to read or your child is looking for something to read, please tune into our YouTube channel for our book talks. Cool, okay. On Friday, July 1st at two o'clock, we have a holiday fan craft for children grades kindergarten through third grade to come in and make their own 4th of July fan. And to they could wave it to us at the parade and just show their support and their celebration. Perfect timing because boy, the 4th of July is pretty warm usually. Yes, for sure. <laughs> and on Tuesday, July 5th at four o'clock for children's in grades third through fifth grade, we have pipe cleaner dragons. So please come to the library, register for this program and we'll show you how to make your own dragon just using simple pipe cleaners. That is a cool looking thing too. Mm -hmm. 
So DIY cooling face mist. I am so excited for this program just because I love cooling face mist. <laughs> I think that they're great for summer. I think that they're great year round. It just makes you feel so much more refreshed after you use it. So this is a program for our teens in grades six through 12th grade. And this is actually going to be a virtual program, but we have all the supplies for you at the library. So pick up the supplies, go home and watch our YouTube channel, and we will show you how to make your own cooling face mist at home. And you know, at the zoo or so many places, they've got those big misters there and mm -hmm. everybody loves that. So think you'll have your own personal mister with you all the time. That's really yeah. great. And it only takes like three ingredients. So. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. On Thursday, July 7th at two o'clock, we have bird houses for children in grades third through fifth grade. Again, please register for this program. We provide everything that you're gonna need to make your own birdhouse at home. And then you get to go home, put it up in your backyard and see all of the nice birds going and enjoying your birdhouse. And they really do. I mean, they're so happy to have their own little home. You'll see, you'll get some birdies in there. And look at how colorful these birdhouses are. I love it. They decorate your yard too. Mm -hmm. On Wednesday, July 13th at 10 o'clock, we have a camping story time for children ages two to five. Again, please, please, please register for this program. Um, they do fill up quickly now that our story times are back in session. Everyone is just excited to come to the programs and get back to the library. So our story times are filling up and you know, everyone is going camping. So why not hear a story time about it? Or if you're not going camping, you can still enjoy it at the library. And there's indoor camping in your very house or bedroom. You know, we make lots of tents over here and, you know, sleeping bags and pillows right in the house. So everybody can camp. Yeah, we do too. <laughs> <laughs> And on Wednesday, July 13th, we have Sharpie shirts. Now it says shirts, but it could also be Sharpie socks. Really just bring in whatever you want to tie dye using Sharpies from the library. This mm. is going to be an outdoors program. Um, really just bring whatever you want, like I said earlier. And this is for teens in grades four through 12th grade. So again, please register though. Dino terrariums. So the new Jurassic Park movie is going to be Jurassic World, I'm sorry, is going to be coming out soon. And why not celebrate that release with Dino terrariums? And this program, like with all our other ones, we provide all supplies. You just bring yourself and your creativity, and then you get to go home with some awesome, scary looking terrariums. <laughs> it really will be. I've seen the ads for those, uh, that movie too. And it's pretty scary looking, so you can scare yourself right at home. No, always scares me too. <laughs> All of them do. <laughs> and Harry Potter has a birthday coming up. And to celebrate his birthday, we are going to be making Harry Potter corner bookmarks on Monday, July 18th at two o'clock for children grades third through fifth grade. So again, come in, use your creativity. And these are just awesome, neat little bookmarks to help you keep your spot in your book. Is it a specific birthday? Is it like 20 years or something like that? Then this is just the yeah. advent of the book came out kind of thing. I think it's just Harry Potter's birthday. I don't okay. know how old Harry Potter is going to be. I have no idea either. You know, who <laughs> knows? But I didn't know if there was like some landmark you know, moment that the book came out or something. So it's just Harry Potter's birthday. Yeah. Cool. And on Tuesday, July 19th, we have melted crayon charms. Um, this is for our teens in grades six through 12th grade. And again, some just awesome jewelry making that you can do with just melting crayons and really putting the finishing touch on that outfit. Wow, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. On Wednesday, June 15th, our furry readers are back at two o'clock. Uh, this is an all ages program. And yes, please register. We do have limited, like I think four or five dogs. And we just wanna make sure that everyone is paired up with a dog and everyone has a chance to read. And these, these pups, they are adorable. We love seeing them come to the library and the, 
owners and the dogs, they just love seeing all the children too. You can see their little skins and everything. It's adorable. Cute. It's cute. On Wednesday, July 20th at four o'clock, we have a paper bag journal. And this is for children grades four through eighth grade. And it, this is one of the virtual programs that we do have. And again, just using simple materials and creating your own journal out of a paper bag. So why not just reuse these materials? Wow, that's very creative. Mm -hmm. Um, Thursday, July 21st at 10 o'clock, we have a beach day story time. Um, this is for our youngest patrons from birth to 23 months, and they are just going to have a ball on the beach at the library. They really will. That's cute. Mm -hmm. And one of our last programs to help wrap up and celebrate summer reading is Dan Goh's Magical Camp Adventure. Uh, this performer is going to be at the library on Friday, July 22nd at 11 o'clock for an all ages program. Again, please make sure that you register for this program and he brings magic, he brings humor, and most of all art to his programs as well. So this is one that truly all ages are going to enjoy. Make sure to register though, mm -hmm. for space. And lastly, what better way to wrap up summer reading than with a dance party? So be sure to register your little ones ages two to five for a dance party at the library on Friday, July 29th at 10 o'clock. So yes, we will be having a ball. We will. And that wraps up Youth and Teen. Well, everybody needs to get out there and register for the summer reading. And then there are so many other activities to do too. And then I know there's prizes and all sorts of things. We talked to about it uh, last month. So it's a great summer to be involved at the library. Yeah. Yes. But and, and, you I, know, it, we have a, don't you have a, a geocache too running through the summer? Yes, I'm sorry, we do. We have a geocache um, that is also hidden somewhere in the library you find the geocache you let us know and we enter you into a raffle for uh, an amazon gift card All right. wow and for those of us who don't know what geocache is could you tell us what that is <laughs> sure so pretty much we give you hints and we give you coordinates to let you know where the cache is in the library and oh. It, you see if you can find it using our hints in the coordinates. And it's like, course, like a digital scavenger hunt, yeah? Yes. Yeah. And if you can't find it, we are more than happy to help you. Um, but yes, there are a, quite a few families that are, they in, love the hunt. They love to see if they can figure it out and find it on their own. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Cool. Good. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks, Tina. Thanks for all the 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 programs we've got there it's been so busy at the library there's so many kids and families and people coming in and out for summer reading both for the youth and for for adults so thanks for sharing all those programs with us and I know Tina's got to run so uh, we'll say farewell to her right now okay thanks Tina see you next month hi thank you mm -hmm. all right Sue so we're here ready for the um adult programs programs for adults and yeah we have summer reading for pro going on for the grown-ups as well. Um, that runs all the way through July 31st. And um, it is a, uh, you can sign in online. You can go to our website at phlibrary.org to sign up. You don't have to come into the library. Um, this is all online again. And we have challenges that we run throughout the summer. So not only do you get points for our tickets for um, how many days you've read, but also for the different challenges we have. Um, so you can uh, come by, if you sign in online, you can come in later and pick up your packet. Um, the, we do have while supplies last, so it's the sooner you sign up, the better. Um, but we do have our little handouts and things like that at the desk if you wanna come in, but you don't have to. So that's the kind of fun thing about it. That is, and it's also Camp I Read. That is, that's really Yeah, good. it's Read Beyond the Beaten Path. That's so we have the campfire kind of camp 
camp theme going on this summer. We have a bingo card. If you come in and um, uh, pick up the virtual, the physical bingo card, it's discover nature. It's kind of fun. You do certain things. And if you get a bingo, you come in and you get entered to win one of the five fairy lamps that we have. And they're on display at our desk too. So you can see the different fairy lamps that we have made and um, you get a chance to win those. Um, yeah, so it's, and then of course, the, at the end, when we tally up all the points, you can put your tickets and for the different challenges or for the different number of days you've read, read you can put your tickets in and we have uh, prizes from different local businesses in, in Palos Heights, such as Harvest Room and Golden Shoes and uh, Capri and uh, Fuller's Car Wash. And, you know, it's a, a, an array of things. So it's a bunch of, it's a lot of fun. It sounds like a lot of fun. And we will wrap it up with our first ever Songs Around the Campfire program in August. I want to just save the date for that. Um, we're going to have a campfire with some s'mores outside, of course. And um, we'll be singing. Matt will be playing his guitar, our musical library. Oh, cute. How and cute. We'll what be you singing. That's uh, August 4th, Thursday. Yeah, it's on our it's on our website. It's on our event calendar. So. Okay. Join us for that. It's going to be fun. Something very different, something new we're trying this year. So, so sign up now, folks. We'd love to have you. July starts off with our travel program, Travel Guide to England's Dramatic Cornwall on Thursday, July 7th at 6.30. This is a, a hybrid program, which means it'll be shown, it'll be a virtual program shown in the library. So you can either come in and sit and view this virtual program or you can view it online. So either way, but we've got um, Anglophil and former UK resident, Claire Evans will join us for a lively discussion on the rugged gem that awaits in Cornwall, England's far West country with dramatic coastlines that have inspired novelists and film location scouts over the years. Um, of course, you're looking at a view of any of you guys, any of you have watched Poldark, this is a, a view of, of a scene that's in there quite a bit. Um, but uh, it is a dramatic coastline, beautiful, and I can't wait to hear uh, Claire Evans's view on it being from England herself. So join us for that. Interesting. Yeah. And on Monday at July 11th at 2 p.m., one of our tech classes is Microsoft OneDrive. So you're going to come in and learn all you want about cloud storage and what on with OneDrive. Upload and access your files from any, any device. So basic computer skills will be needed for that. And you do want to register. This is a virtual program. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And also on Tuesday, July 12th, how to use Google Drive and Google Photos. This is uh, another one of our tech classes. The, uh, this You'll learn how to use the amazing free tools from Google Drive and Google Photos. Learn how to save your documents and photos to the cloud so that you can access them from anywhere. So you'll need to have a Google account to have this, to, to join in on this program. So be sure you do that. If you have any questions on how to do that, give us a call and we'll be happy to help you out. So that's on, uh, again, a virtual program. You want to sign up for that. That sounds really um, so useful to find out more information about that, and especially if you've never really used it before and uh, you, you have the opportunity to learn more about it and actually do it. Absolutely. So, yeah, and you know, it's, it's one of those things that's out there and some people don't know exactly what it does. So why don't you tune in and find out, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And coming up on Thursday, July 14th, we have a special program sponsored by the Friends of the Library called Driving Forces, the History of Women in Automobiles. We have um, Barbara Barrett. She's an amazing presenter. She's going to talk. She talks about how from the very start, women have been right there next to men influencing, buying and designing, driving and racing automobiles. Barbara Barrett will discuss the history of women and, and the automobile from the horseless carriage to auto designers to auto racing and a number of other notables. And again, we want to thank the friends for sponsoring this program for us. And um, this is getting everybody ready for the car show that's coming up in Palo Sites the next week. Exactly. Yeah, it's right on that next weekend, the 16th, I think. The 21st, yeah. Oh, it's the 21st this year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
So coming up on July 20th on the beach, North Carolina's Barrier Islands on Wednesday, the 20th, we, we have Nancy McCauley, who's, she's a great travelogue um, presenter, and she explores North Carolina's Barrier Islands, and um, she'll include the Cape Hatteras National Seashore with its sandy beaches and ocean waves and lighthouses and pirates and shipwrecks, the Wright Brothers, the Lost Colony, Colony and the Ocracoke Islands wild horses. So if you've ever wanted to learn all about that, tune in for that on July 20th at 6.30. This is a virtual program. We'll be showing it in the library, in the meeting room, if you want to come in-house to view it. But you can also view it online. Well, and this, this is a really great program for people who um, actually want to go there and, and you get like some ideas about what you should see, where you should go. And it's not that far away. You can get there pretty easily. You're right. Absolutely. And she does. She um, usually gives a really great um, background of uh, the history of the place, too. So when you do go, you kind of feel you're ready to, to see what's out there. Yeah, you know a little bit. Yeah. And then when, coming up on Monday, July 25th at 2 p.m., we have Gmail Basics. Again, another one of our tech classes. Uh, you're going to find out how to get the most out of your Gmail by learning how to create and send emails, attach files, and add contacts, use tabs and labels, and a lot more. So sign up for that. Again, that's a virtual program. Okay? Okay. And on Tuesday, July 26th, we're going to take you to the Art of Paul Cezanne. And before you visit the uh, Art Institute's exhibit of Paul Cezanne, which is running through the summer, be sure to check out the artist and his work from our favorite art historian, Paul uh, Jeff Misher. So discover how Paul Cezanne bought, uh, sought to challenge the conservative art world in the late 19th century Paris with his post-impressionist painting style that paved the trail for the likes of Picasso and Matisse. And this hybrid program will be uh, uh, shown as a virtual program with in-house or virtual seating as well. You know, that's really great, too. That, I mean, we just talked about the same thing, going to North Carolina or taking a trip or whatever. But having the background knowledge before you see an exhibit, too, makes the exhibit more interesting if you know Absolutely. a lot about it. Absolutely. It really does enrich your visit there. And, and you, when you look at things like, oh, I, I know why he did this. I learned this. And, you know, right. uh, so you, it does it really en it does enrich your, your experience. So so come out and do this and uh, see this program and then go see the, um, the exhibit at the Art Institute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that wraps up our programs for uh, July, but we're going to do some announcements, Sue, because um, that's just what kind of what we do. And, and what we're doing right. right is the <laughs> kindness corner for, Ju for July and August is a special <laughs> kindness corner because we're featuring PHTV Channel 4. So the thought is, you know, we've had, the library has had such an incredible response to spreading kindness throughout the community during, so during the months of July and August, we want the community's help in showing our appreciation for PHTV4. But much, but I don't know how much the community knows, but all of the work that PHTV4 does is volunteer work. Okay, and we have, they have an incredible crew and they do a wonderful job showcasing many of the local events, the businesses, the government and the news. And they help us stay connected to our local community in so many ways. So we wanna help show how much we appreciate Channel 4 by helping to raise money for a new camera that, they are, that they'd like to do. So our goal for Kindness Corner, the library's goal is to help raise $1,299 for a new overhead camcorder for the studio. So throughout July and August, anybody in the community can come to the library and make a donation to that, for that reason, for our Kindness Corner, to just to help show the support for PHTV4. Um, and it's funny, Sue, because, you know, so many people want to do good for the community. And this Kindness Corner has been just an incredible, um, avenue for people to, to, to do that, exactly that same thing, is to do kindness for others in our community. And this month of July and August, we want to give back a little bit to Channel 4 for all you guys do in our community. Well, I'm really touched. That's re really, I, I'll use the word kind. It's so kind. And uh, <laughs> yes, we, we do have a, you know, a great group of people who do volunteer their time. And 
we just want good things for the community. That's why we do it so that people will be informed and find out things and feel more connected to others right here in our own community. So I'm really, I'm really very touched by that. That's really very, very, very nice. Good. Well, you know, we appreciate um, all the things that PHTV does, PHTV4 does for our community. And this is just a little thing to get started. So all of you folks out there, if you want to, to join us, please do come by the library. Let us know that you want to support PHTV4 with your donation. Okay. Thank you. Very right. Yeah. I'm excited about that. Yeah. And then, of course, um, the farmer's market has started. The uh, Parks and Rec and Palos Heights have got that running and going. But, and so come visit the library booth at the farmer's market the first and third Tuesdays of the month from 10, to 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. till noon. And uh, the first 25 visitors get a special gifts that we hand out. So visit us and visit us early. <laughs> uh, so we'd love to see you out there at, at the farmer's market. Oh, that's great. And, you know, it's great not just to see the library and, and uh, check in and say hello, but also to support the farmer's market because we're so fortunate we have one in town and we want to, you know, be there and support that so we can keep it going. And everybody works so hard to get that farmer's market for the community, another great community project. That's right. And then, of course, just keep in mind on uh, Thursday, July 21st, the library will be closing early at five o'clock in support of the classic car show. So um, we'll close at five on Thursday that day specifically because people like to use our parking lot for the show. But remember, you can visit the library's website 24 seven uh, to renew items, access our digital collection and or our online resources at phlibrary.org. And, uh, you know, we're so thrilled to, you know, have the car show again, something great in this community that everybody can participate in. It's very, it's a wonderful event, lots of, of people and crowds and fun things to do there. And it's nice to have it going full speed ahead um, again. Oh, yeah, um, that you, you're right. The crowds are immense. Um, there's lots of food, a lot of people. Uh, it's a good time. Music. A lot of music. Yeah. yeah, lots of yeah. music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and it's fun. It's fun to walk around and you know, hopefully, see your neighbor or someone yeah. you know that that's there, make some new friends too. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So the other day, the library will be closing early, is what you're saying. That's right. We will. I'm going to stop sharing my screen because that is it, Sue. We <laughs> okay. have. Uh, that wraps up our July and actually the summer, you know, so. It, it really does. And I mean, look at all the great and wonderful things you can do right here. We don't even have to go outside the community. And yep. in fact, I'm thinking, yes, you can go uh, watch and then go to North Carolina or Cornwall or wherever. But if you aren't able to or don't care to travel right now or whatever, don't want to use your gas money <laughs> for that. You can just watch some of these great programs. You can participate in things right here in town and not go very far at all. And, um, you know, we have all of that available and I'm, I'm just thrilled by that. So I, I thank everybody at the library, as I always do, for all their great hard work and all the fun things that are taking place. And, and um, you know, before you know it, that Youth and Teen Center uh, renovation will be done. And that's just one more great uh, feather in our cap for, you know, a beautiful expand, not expansion, but renovation of our library. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's going to be exciting. There'll be a, um, you know, a grand reopening in the fall. Sometime we are still waiting on things, um, but it's exciting to see what it looks like now. And, but you're right, Sue, you know, uh, but until then we've got things going on downstairs. Um, it's a lot of fun to see so many people. Uh, come in the library and, you know, summer has started. You can tell school is out because there's a, a lot of families in and, um, and everybody, you know, uh, people of all ages. So we love having you here. If you can't get to the library, you can do it digitally. You guys see, we have digital books. You can um, audio books. Um, I just was reading um, a survey from the American um, Publishers Association that said audio books have seen incredible increases in usage and sales over the past several years. And they just continue to rise in use. And we see it all the time because we know what, you know, people are checking out, but we can also, you know, you can take your phone, 
download your books on your your phone or your your any listening device you want to use your tablets whatever and listen to your audio books uh, and a lot of people like to have them on when they're you know working around the house uh cooking or traveling on the bikes or in a car. Um, it's just a great way when you don't have, you know, to time to sit down and read a book, you can listen to it on the go. So, yeah. I mean, audiobooks are, are so great. And I, I think over time, audiobooks have gotten better and better. I mean, there yeah. are some people reading that are, they're magnificent actors because they're doing all these great voices and it's, you're just so engrossed in it. It's, and you're picturing it in your mind instead yeah. of watching it. And, and you're not, not immobile, you're moving, you're exercising, you're getting mm -hmm. your housework done, you're doing other things, <laughs> yeah. you know, you can listen to it. I love it. I think it's just great. Yeah, you're right. Uh, they definitely have incre uh, improved over the years. And um, it is, it's quite a, it's like, it's a totally different way to experience a book. There's, you know, it's different from just reading. And so, yeah, some people still like to read and that's wonderful, but um, we still have the audios are just a whole different thing. So they and the whole thing of that is that they're available digitally, so you can just use your library card to access it. So it's fun. It's good. It is fun. Well, again, thanks, Janine. And we will look forward to seeing uh, everybody here and there at the library, whether it's the parade or the car show or the farmer's market or whatever. We'll, we'll look for everybody and uh, read those books and join in that campfire at That's the right. end. <laughs> That's, That's right. The thing. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Janine. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching us. See you next time on At the Library. Bye-bye.